Hi, everyone. So once again, my name is Jun. I'm a third year PhD student in the computer science department at Stanford. Uh, so this is work that I've been developing at Stanford uh, with my colleagues, so my advisor, Michael Bernstein, and Percy Leung. So we work at the intersection of human-computer interaction and natural language processing. So really the question that I like to ask is how can we leverage some of the latest advances in machine learning, natural language processing, to enable new forms of interactions? And this is certainly a product of that line of work. Uh, and this was also in collaboration with Mary Morris and Carrie Kai, who's been my mentors at Google uh, for, for a number of years now. Okay. For over four decades now, from the time of cognitive architectures and symbolic systems to statistical machine learning, we, the researchers and practitioners at the intersection of HCI and AI, have envisioned the ability to simulate believable human behavior. Behavior that's so compelling and so human-like that they provide an illusion of life. In our vision, this ability, if achieved, promised a new class of interactive applications, ranging from model human processors for usability testing to social robots, NPCs, and ubiquitous computing applications that require a rich understanding of human cognition, and even to the foundation of small and large-scale social simulations that would test social science and economics theories that are difficult to implement in real life. But despite their wide application spaces, we faced fundamental challenges when simulating human behavior. The space of possibility in the way we behave and communicate, we found, was much too vast and too complex to navigate with existing methods. But I see a new opportunity that is emerging. Generative models, such as large language models that are being deployed today, are trained on broad data that reflect our lives, like the traces on our social web, Wikipedia, and more, so as a result of that, these models encode a tremendous amount about us, how we live, talk, and behave. So I posit that with the right method, they can be transformed into the core ingredient that had been missing in the past few decades that will enable us to simulate believable human behavior. So today, I'll introduce a new way of simulating human behavior in fully general computational agents that can populate an open world like ours while ensuring long-term coherence by fusing a large language model with a novel agent architecture that remembers, reflects, and plans based on constantly growing memories and cascading social dynamics. These agents, I guess we have sort of already, you may have already seen on Twitter and feed and so forth, can not only plan and lead a believable day in life where they wake up in the morning, do their morning routines, and go to work as individuals in a game, sandbox game environment, but they can also come together to give birth to an entirely artificial society of their own, like the one you see here, where, they, where each agent will have their own subjective memory and experience, and autonomously spread information, form relationships, and coordinate amongst each other before reflecting on the past days and deciding on how they will live tomorrow. And these are what I call the generative agents. And these generative agents, I'm going to suggest, open up a new genre of human AI interaction that is fueled by our newfound ability to build, simulate believable human behavior. Okay. So that was sort of the main pitch for the project. Um, I'll go into a little bit more detail in sort of a, what we've seen in the demo. Um, and without going too much in detail, I'll briefly talk about how this works and how we put this together. And I sort of mentioned that um, I really appreciate uh, you know, work that uh, GP team has been doing and some of, a lot of sort of the open source uh, projects have sort of come up since we published this paper. The fun side note is, we can t I can talk about it in, at events, I heard. Uh, this paper is technically under review, so we cannot tweet about it, we cannot open source anything yet, uh, which is also the reason why we really appreciate the community becoming really excited about this project and actually contributing their implementations of it. Uh, so we really appreciate that. So, just to quickly demonstrate to you in a little bit more detail the small build. So this is a setting of our demonstration for generative agents and the mode of agent interaction that takes place in it. So Smallville is the same uh, sandbox game environment that we developed, featuring the common affordances of a small house, a vill uh, small village ranging from houses, apartments, cafe, bars, school, and stores, and the sub areas and objects that make the space functional like the bathroom, the kitchen, and the common room in a family house, and a bookshelf and a table in the common room. So you can basically imagine this 
being a, if you are familiar with more of the technical terms here, like scene graph, this is basically a tree structure uh, where we can navigate uh, this tree using something like a large language model, depending on what action we need to take. And we populated this space with 25 generative agents and initialized each of them with one paragraph of natural language description to depict each agent's identity, including their occupation and relationship with, with other agents, and seeded this paragraph into the agent's memory at the start of the simulation. And that is all the input that we ever give to these agents. That is it. Then these agents interact with their environment through their actions based on their own volition. So here is how this works in Smallville. So first, the agents generate a natural language statement describing their current actions, such as Isabella Rodriguez is drinking coffee. They then translate this into concrete movements that affect the sandbox game world along with the automatically generated emojis that visually describe the agent's actions, and they influence the state of the object in the world. A bed can, uh, be, uh, can be occupied when an agent is sleeping. A refrigerator can be empty when an agent uses up the ingredients for making breakfast. Then to interact with each other, they determine whether they want to engage in conversations when they see another agent and they generate natural language dialogue if they decide to engage. Like this dialogue between Isabella and Tom about Sam Moore, who is a fellow agent in Smallville, initiated with a memory that he is running for local mayor. So in case you cannot read uh, the text in the back, so here Isabella remarks, I'm still weighing my options, but I've been discussing the election with Sam Moore. What are your thoughts on him? And Tom responds, to be honest, I don't like Sam Moore. I think he's out of touch with the community and doesn't have our best interests at heart. And finally, the user can also interact and control the agent by inviting an agent already present in the world, such as Isabella and John, or join as an outside visitor. Um, actually, I'll, to go a little bit more in depth here, uh, though, so you may have seen, so this is something that you may have seen on, in some of the demos and some of the implementation that's been coming out recently, a few different modes of interaction that we present in this work, three modes. Dialogue, uh, alter, and embody, so I'll actually quickly talk about dialogue. You can actually talk to any of these agents. So I said we simulated 25 agents in this world. You can actually take any of them out and initiate a conversation. You can ask, what did you, what did you do today? Who did you meet? What did you talk about with this person? And they'll actually remember you as well and what you talked to them about. Or you can actually go in as their inner voice. So if we have a June agent in the game world, then I, then maybe, Maybe Ed can come in and say, I'm your inner voice, and basically give me a directive. Maybe I, Ed will say, now you are going to go cook dinner. And I all of a sudden decide to go cook dinner. Or in this case, John, uh, if we tell John that you're running for mayor or office, he will tell his family in the game world about his candidacy and actually start running and campaigning. And then you can also change the surroundings of these agents by burning their food, uh, which is a little bit mean, uh, but we have done that. Uh, and you can also embody an agent, and that's the part that I already cover. Okay, so that's sort of a, I think for now, that's um, as deep as I go in terms of uh, the technical details. Uh, you may, I guess some of the things you may have seen is like the architecture of these agents and so forth. So I'm happy to take questions about them. But one thing that we have sort of noticed was a lot of interest around sort of, uh, once this came out, there were sort of a lot of interest around generative agents. And I think what was really exciting for me to see and our team for, uh, for our team to see was I think a lot of people sort of saw potential application space for a generative agent to be quite vast. Uh, so before I end, um, I'll quickly talk about one sort of a project that predates generative agents actually, but this, we actually had a little bit of a fun story here. We've been thinking about building something like generative agents with game NPCs for about two and a half years. Um, so that's the, the generative agent project was what we wanted to work on at first. But we actually started with this project, which was always meant to be an application of generative agents with a much simpler architecture. Um, but I think we sort of, as a team, we wanted to sort of get the sense that this is worth doing and this is feasible. And this was the project uh, that we've done. I'll briefly cover this in like two, three minutes since like, this might be more uh, unfamiliar to some of the uh, audience members here. So again, this is work that I developed with my advisor, Michael and Percy, as well as, uh, as, well as my mentee, Lindsay Popolsky, uh, who is also a PhD student at Stanford, and Mary Morris and Carrie Kai. So the same team except for Lindsay here. Uh, so for many decades now, we have designed and deployed countless social computing systems. 
And when I say social computing systems, really think anything that's like social on your computer, right? Social media, Slack, messaging apps, and so forth. But the irony is, even today, as more and more people populate these systems, we continue to get surprised by the things that happen in them, like unexpected trolling or sort of antisocial behavior, all the way to cases such as people congregating to spread hate speech and misinformation. But why is this? Because in theory, this issue of understanding how people might be, behave and use an interactive system is something that we already know how to tackle. That's what prototypes like the one you see here are all about. So this is something that our academic community and even beyond has certainly been uh, using and we've been, uh, we've been used to this. But here's a challenge. In my vision, a successful social computing prototype needs to prototype not, for instance, the user flow of how one might click around different pages, but the social dynamics that might arise when the system reaches critical mass of users. Because that's where the uncertainty is in large scale social systems. And that has been, that has been an impossible task for our existing prototyping approaches. Where are we going to get thousands or even tens of thousands of diverse test users? How would we prototype the social dynamics that might arise without releasing these designs to a large number of people? The argument here is that generative agents enables a new way of prototyping a social computing system that tackles this challenge by generating a large number of synthetic social interactions and users that might arise in a populated social system. So that's what we call social simulacra. More broadly, social simulacra is an approach. So it is an approach of leveraging the richness and the generative capacity of models such as a large language model to populate a social computing system with generative agents and behaviors for the purpose of prototyping the social dynamics. So this particular project also has a demo. If you just type in social simulacra on Google, uh, you, you might find the Heroku app. Here, the idea here is we basically repopulated existing subreddits to basically demo our capacity. The idea here is, G so we used GPT-3 because it was about two years ago when we launched this project. And GPT-3 was sort of the most up-to-date model back then. And what we've done was we used GPT-3 to create social simulacra of subreddits that did not exist when GPT-3 first came out. And back then, the data update wasn't so frequent as like what we were seeing with ChatGPT. So GPT-3 genuinely didn't know about the subreddits that we replicated. What we find is we can use these generative agents to populate the space in a believable manner to the point where we can create believable social interactions, even in communities and about topics that GPT-3 has no ideas about. So I, I briefly mentioned this earlier during my panel. We can basically use GPT-3 to have it talk about COVID vaccination. Even, when, during, even during the days when GPT-3 didn't know anything about COVID, right? So you can really start to imagine if we can, so going a little bit beyond games and game applications, you can imagine using these kind of agents not only for interacting with game users and so forth, but really try to expand our boundaries on what we can do with computational systems, right? And I think this is sort of one vision that I was particularly excited by and continue to be excited by, where can we actually populate this human-like society to, so that we may better understand who we are, how we might want to design social systems and policies.